Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Yeah, welcome Maharaj. May I have a lot of blessings. Yes, good. Just like Prabhupada. Hi. <laughs> nice to see you, Maharaj. How are you? I am very fine. <laughs> good. Always a pleasure to have you, Andasha. <laughs> Thank you. Pleasure to be with you all. Thank you, Maharaj. So I will mute everybody. I know you start with Bajan. Okay. I will mute everybody so there will be no noise from anybody's background. Okay. Yeah, I'm happy to see a nice contingent from Columbus, Ohio. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Bajan. Merci, Maharaj. Thank you so much. You can start, Maharaj. <laughs> okay. Before I begin, I would like to request the devotees as far as possible to put on their cameras so I can see their moonlight faces and it will be more personal. Nice. Thank you. So yes, I'll begin by singing the Mangala Charana prayers and leading a short kirtan and then we will speak on today's verse from the Bhagavad Gita. Yes, my Lord.
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare.
Iskan founder Acharya Shila Prabhupada ki jai. Dayam Vishnupad Paramansa Paripraja Kacharya Stotra Siddhisi Srimad Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Gosam Prabhupada ki jai. Anantakoti Vaishnavindu ki jai. Yamacharya Srila Haridas Thakur ki jai. Prem Seka Hosi Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Adwaita Galadhar Shri Vasa Adhikoa Bhakta Vindu ki jai. Shri Radha Krishna Gopa Gopinath Shamakunda Radha Kunda Giri Govardhan Ki Jai Vrindavan Dham Ki Jai Navadweep Dham Ki Jai Jamuna Mai Ki Jai Ganga Mai Ki Jai Tulsi Devi Ki Jai Bhakti Devi Ki Jai Sanveta Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai Nitai Gaur Premanande Hari Hari all glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories, all glories to Sri Guru and Sri Goranga. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Right. So Again, my dear devotees, as far as possible, please put on your videos so we can see you and reciprocate with you better. I will just get my Bhagavad Gita from my shelf. So we are reading from Srimad Bhagavad Gita as it is. Chapter 2, text 21. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. 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 Veda Vinasinamnityam Yaena Kam gatayati hanti kam. Veda vinashinam nityam. Ya enam ajam avyayam. Katam sa purusha partha. Kam gatayati hanti kam. Veda knows. Of this shinam, indestructible, nityam, always existing, ya, one who, enam, this, so, ajam, unborn, avyayam, immutable, katam, how, 
sa that purusha person partha o partha arjuna come whom gatayati causes to hurt hanti kills come whom translation o partha how can a person who knows that the soul is indestructible eternal unborn and immutable kill anyone or cause anyone to kill purport by his divine grace Srila Prabhupada everything has its proper utility and a man who is situated in complete knowledge knows how and where to apply a thing for its proper utility. Similarly, violence also has its utility. And how to apply violence rests with the person in knowledge. Although the justice of the peace awards capital punishment to a person condemned for murder, the justice of the peace cannot be blamed because he orders violence to another person according to the codes of justice. In Manu Samhita, the law book for mankind, it is supported that a murderer should be condemned to death so that in his next life, he will not have to suffer for the great sin he has committed. Therefore, the king's punishment of hanging a murderer is actually beneficial. Similarly, when Krishna orders fighting, it must be, be concluded that violence is for supreme justice. And thus Arjuna should follow the instruction, knowing well that such violence committed in the act of fighting for Krishna is not violence at all, because at any rate, the man, or rather the soul, cannot be killed. So for the administration of justice, so-called violence is permitted. A surgical operation is not meant to kill the patient, but to cure him. Therefore, the fighting to be executed by Arjuna at the instruction of Krishna is with full knowledge. So there is no possibility of sinful reaction. Translation again, O Partha, how can a person who knows that the soul is indestructible, eternal, unborn and immutable, kill anyone or cause anyone to kill? So this purport by Srila Prabhupada is very deep and full of meaning. But first, let us consider the verse itself because it tells us who we really are, what is our actual identity. So first of all, uh, we're the soul. And what is the nature of the soul? Avasinam, 
it is indestructible. Nityam, it is always existing or eternal. It is ajam, unborn. And it is avyayam, immutable. So this is very good news that we are eternal and uh, cannot be, we, the soul, uh, cannot be harmed or killed. Now in the purport, uh, Srila Prabhupada gives a very apt example that when the judge orders a murderer to be killed, it is actually beneficial for the murderer. Uh, and, and therefore, um, the um, Manusamita says that a murderer should be condemned to death. If he's not, then both the present life and the next life are ruined. His present life is ruined because he's a murderer and he will be punished as a murderer. But because he has not fully paid for his crime, his next life also will be ruined because he'll, he'll have to pay for it in his next life. If he's hanged, or you know, condemned to death, then this life is over. There's no more suffering in this life. And that atonement of suffering capital punishment is so powerful that in his next life, he uh, takes birth where a pious person would take birth because uh, his sin has been washed away by his uh, being hanged or nowadays electrocuted. Unfortunately, most people are unaware of the existence of the soul or the laws of karma. And therefore, out of sentiment, they protest against capital punishment. But as we have just read and discussed, capital punishment is beneficial for a murderer. And then Srila Prabhupada extends the reasoning to say that just as the uh, killing ordered by the judge uh, uh, to the murderer is beneficial. Similarly, the killing ordered by Krishna to Arjuna is also beneficial uh, for all concerned. And in fact, it is said that everyone who died on the battlefield of Kurukshetra in the presence of Lord Krishna was liberated. When we were in Amritsar, Punjab, with Srila Prabhupada, we were invited to the uh, estate of a king. Of course, at that time, you know, there were no kings in India, but he was, you would, you, you would say he was from a, a, a royal family, a Kshatriya family. And uh, he told Srila Prabhupada that uh, a, an astrologer had informed him that he was present uh, in the battle of Kurukshetra, but that unfortunately 
he was on the side against Krishna. And he felt very sorry about that. And Srila Prabhupada told him not to worry because that could not be true. Because everyone who died on the battlefield of Kurukshetra in the presence of Krishna was liberated. So <laughs> he, he doesn't have to worry about uh, uh, being in the battle of Kurukshetra. <laughs> On, on the side against Krishna. So, yeah. Um, but in, in the purport, Srila Prabhupada is talking about everything having its uh, useful purpose, including violence. And uh, there are some people who uh, unfortunately try to derive the philosophy of nonviolence from the Bhagavad Gita. Of course, nonviolence or ahimsa is mentioned in the Bhagavad Gita as a virtue. And in that sense, uh, you know, we should be nonviolent. We should not kill uh, living entities uh, unnecessarily for the sake of our sense gratification. So in that sense, uh, we uh, agree with ahimsa or nonviolence. But in the service of Krishna, uh, violence may be necessary as it was on the battlefield of Kurukshetra for Arjuna. <laughs> and I will um, re relate one incident that took place in Juhu during our uh, struggle. <laughs> uh, that's a long story. But uh, at one stage, our semi-permanent temple was demolished uh, by the municipality. Uh, we understand that they had been bribed to do that uh, atrocious deed. And at that time, uh, Balasab Thakare, who was the founder and leader of the Shiv Sena political party, intervened and he had the demolition stopped just before they had come to the stage of demolishing the, the deity room. They had already demolished the, uh, the Darshan Mandap and they were just about to to start on the deity room when uh, Balasab Thakre spoke to M.W. Desai, the municipal commissioner, and, uh, and the commissioner had the um, demolition stopped. And the K-Ward officer himself, because there were no cell phones or such, <laughs> methods of communication that he came running personally um, to the site to stop the demolition. So for some time, we were meeting the different municipal corporators to enlist their support for giving us permission to rebuild the temple. But at a certain stage, we realized that actually we didn't need to get permission to rebuild the temple. We already had permission to build the temple and, and keep the temple. So we didn't need permission to rebuild it. We could just do it. So um, we it was it was um, Friday, 
it was a Friday we came to that um, realization. And Mrs. Nyer, who was the, in a way you can say the enemy, uh, found out about what we were planning to do. Uh, that was on Thursday we came to that conclusion. And then the next day on Friday, she went to the high court with a petition for an injunction to prevent us from rebuilding. It was her property, she argued, and she hadn't given us permission. But the, uh, the judge, Justice Nyan, was familiar with our society and activities and appreciative of Prabhupada and our movement. And he said he would not, con he would consider granting the injunction only after he heard both sides. And because it was a Friday, he pointed out, at the end of the week, he would take up the matter on Monday. But Mrs. Nair appealed, just give a temporary injunction for the weekend and then you can decide up on the permanent injunction. But Justice Nine responded, no, without hearing the other side, I will not pass any judgment. When we heard of Mrs. Nair's petition and the judge's response, we knew we had to take advantage of the opportunity. If the judge ruled against us, we would be prohibited from going ahead with the reconstruction. But once the temple was up, we understood, an injunction, even if it were granted, would be meaningless. The temple would already be in place and no rebuilding would be necessary. So we figured we had the weekend until Monday morning to put up the structure. So the next day, Saturday, I approached some of our friends uh, to get materials for the reconstruction. It wasn't easy to get materials then. Um, uh, the, the government had imposed cement control uh, to purchase it legally. One had to uh, procure a government approved quota. And by the time we were ready to proceed, it was the weekend and many shops were closed. But it so happened that Mr. Seti was one of the great heroes of Hare Krishna land, Juhu, uh, was visiting Juhu with his family to check on his, his house that was under construction. Uh, just a, f a few blocks from the temple. He recalled, when we came, we saw that the small shed had been demolished. And the description given to us of the demolition was horrifying. Not only was the temple demolished, but they wanted to take away the deities. Mr. Seti was in poor health, but he declared, no matter whether laborers are available or not, I shall rebuild this temple and will do the labor work myself. As it turned out, he was able to bring plenty of laborers and also supplies from his own construction sites. In the course of the day, Mrs. Nair, Matre, who was uh, the corrupt uh, municipal counselor who was in cahoots with Nair, and Mrs. Nair's solicitor, Bachubai Shah, all came to the site, Hare Krishna land. You can't do this, they shouted, demanding that we stop. Bachubai Shah came to serve me with what I presumed to be a notice stopping me from rebuilding the temple and threatening me with consequences if I did. 
But when I saw him, I ran away as fast as I could. And he came running after me as fast as he could in his suit and tie. And I thought the respectable solicitor Bachu Bai Shah is running after me like a child in a playground. Where is his dignity? He couldn't catch me. And when I looked back from a safe distance, I saw him looking frustrated, leave the letter with someone else who just happened to be there with no proof that I had received the letter or ever would. Matre too demanded that we halt the construction. No, Mr. Seti replied, why should we stop? You can build it up, Matre threatened, but I will come in the night with 50 gundas, hooligans, and break it down. Mr. Seti turned to his son, who was by his side, and said, Bridge Mohan, bring my revolver and my rifle. This is on the theme of everything having its proper use, including violence. So Mr. Seti turned to his son and said, Bring my revolver and my rifle. Then Mr. Seti said to Matre, don't bring 50 gundas, bring 100, bring 200. I have 250 cartridges. You'll have to bring at least 251 gundas. So, uh, Mr. Seti had a kshatriya side and he was staunch. Um, later, uh, Maitali said, uh, echoing everyone's admiration, they did not count on the amazing heroism and bravery of my personal hero, Mr. P. L. Seti. As Bridge Mohan Seti remembered, with the revolver in my hand, and the rifle in daddy's hand, we started the work. We could not do this because of something in us, but because of the blessings of Prabhupada. Only with his blessings and mercy could we start the construction. The entire night it was raining cats and dogs, that means <laughs> very heavily, but we never stopped the work, it went on. As the rain fell, Mr. Seti recalled how by lifting Govardhan Hill, Lord Krishna had protected the inhabitants of Vrindavan from devastating rainfall sent by Indra. He was unperturbed. He thought, Indra wants to test me? All right. If you want to come down, you can come down more heavily. But I have the blessings of Srila Prabhupada. I have to rebuild the temple, and I will. They were joined on guard duty by various uh, friends and supporters from the area. A few police constables came in a van, uh, but they left around midnight. I was overseeing the rebuilding, and Tamal Krishna told me, I want you to stay up all night and make sure the work is done. People will be working all night long and gundas may come to attack. I want you to stay up and make sure that the work keeps going and that nothing goes wrong. A few days earlier, Satsurupa Das Goswami, my first temple president, by whom I was greatly inspired had passed through Bombay. I appreciated his humble and gentle demeanor and I wanted to emulate him. When Tamal Krishna told me to stay up all night and oversee the work, I mentioned how I wanted to be like Satsurupa Maharaj, a simple, humble sadhu. Tamal Krishna looked me straight in the eyes 
and with a firm intensity and controlled anger responded, your humility will be to stay up all night and make sure this temple gets rebuilt. I thought about it and I had to agree. Where was the humility if I was not ready to surrender to the order or desire of the spiritual master? It was more, um, well, yeah, I, I, I could have retired for the evening so I could get up early and be a good devotee and chant my rounds, which wasn't bad. But I wouldn't have really been humble. It was more humble to submit to the, or, uh, the authority and do the needful for Srila Prabhupada's service. To be humble meant to be ready without personal consideration to do whatever the spiritual master wanted, whether or not it conformed to popular conceptions of a humble sadhu. Mr. Seti and his son, the friends and life members and the laborers stayed up all night to protect and complete the construction. Mr. Seti recounted, I was there with a gun. We started at nine. At 11, one man came at the road, but I challenged him. If you come inside, I will shoot you. And he ran away and shouted to some other men, they are ready to fight, don't go there. It was pouring rain and the lightning was bad. And when the men were putting up the asbestos sheets, they were slipping on the ground. So we brought around 50 mats and put them, and put 20 men on them, one man supporting another. So there was no slipping. 10 masons worked all night and we completed the walls and the plaster. So the devotees, life menders, masons and other skilled workers, laborers and other friends did it. They put it all up in that one night, finishing around four in the morning and no one came to disturb the work. And then we had Mangalarti. Matre returned around seven the next morning, but by then it was too late. It is built, we told him. Go to the court. Later that morning, we appealed, we appeared in the high court and told the judge that the temple had already been rebuilt. What is built is built, the judge said to Mrs. Dyer. No one can destroy the temple. So there's a very good part just about to begin, and I will be back in one minute.
Hare Krishna. So now we hear Srila Prabhupada's reaction. When Prabhupada heard the news, he considered it a complete victory. The temple had been rebuilt. And uh, now we come to this point about everything having its proper use, including violence. Um, so during the temple reconstruction, Mr. Seti had demonstrated his Kshatriya spirit, for which Prabhupada expressed his appreciation, also teaching us a lesson that sometimes a fighting spirit was required. In this way, we have to fight, he said later. We should not be afraid for these rascals. Why should you be afraid? If they take to Gundaism, we shall engage 50 Gundas. Come on, let us see. We have to maintain that spirit. Anyaya ye kare prabhu ara anyaya ye sahe. Rabindranath Tagore's poetry. One who does wrong and one who suffers wrong, both are wrong. One should not do anything wrong. One should not suffer anything wrong. That is human. If someone does harm to me, wrong to me, I cannot suffer it. I shall not do harm to anyone. That's all right. But if you want to give me suffering, I must fight you. Why shall I suffer it? That is Kshatriya spirit. Yudhe chapya palayanam. If you are challenging, then all right, come on. I accept this challenge. We have to do like that. So Prabhupada was referring to the verse in the Bhagavad Gita, 1843, describing the qualities of a kshatriya. Soryam tejo dritir dakshyam yude chapya palayanam danam ishwara bhavascha kshatsham karma svabhavajam. Heroism, power, determination, resourcefulness, courage in battle, generosity, and leadership are the natural qualities of work for the kshatriyas. Prabhupada continued, if somebody is a tatai, aggressor, you unnecessarily attack me, I must first kill you. That is my duty. Just like you have done here, Satiji, I'll bring my revolver. That is argumentum ad baculum. Here they wanted to put us into trouble and he was in great trouble. So he came and stood. All right, come on, we shall fight. Bring my revolver. He did that. So we have to do like that. Why shall I tolerate unnecessary justice? Take that spirit. In Srimad Bhagavatam 1752 and 50, excuse me, 53 and 54, Lord Krishna himself instructed Arjuna. The personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna said, a friend of a Brahmin is not to be killed, but if he is an aggressor, he must be killed. All these rulings are in the scripture and you should act accordingly. So if there's a fight, Prabhupada said, we must be prepared to fight. Mr. Seti mentioned me that I had supported him and I responded referring to him. He was very heroic. He was very heroic. Yes, Prabhupada said, he's a kshatriya. Then Mr. Seti told us about his experiences fighting at the time of the partition between India and Pakistan. 
in the Pakistan time, he said, I fought 40, 50 men. Yes, Prabhupada confirmed. That is Kshatriya spirit. If you want to fight, you killed. Yes, so many times, so many times. So you have got experience. Sometimes I have walked on the dead bodies. Really, so many dead bodies. <laughs> uh, I was with four men at Patankot, a Tonga, a horse-drawn carriage came with six Muslims and they challenged us. We will kill you. We said, yes, come, you kill us. We will kill you. We fight. We were ready at that time because Revolver was with us and Kulhari axe and Kundasa curved sword. One, my friend was from Gujarawala. He showed this Kundasa and cut the first one's head off and he was running. Prabhupada said, Acha still running. Running in Mahabharata, I heard that a body was running, but I actually saw it. His head was cut off and the body was running. Then he fell down and after that, the other men went. The one man got out from the Tonga and first we cut off his head and then the others ran away. We saved all the fellows. That is also Krishna consciousness, Prabhupada said. You see how many demons were killed by Krishna. Um, referring to the rebuilding of the temple, Mr. Seti said, I declared if they challenge us, I, I am ready, come on. In the night at the temple, I challenged, come on. You are 150, we are not afraid. And then when Matri came with that barrister to give Giriraj notice, I scolded and insulted him publicly. Therefore, Prabhupada said, Matri was so against that we must stop this. Yes, I heard from that doctor that he was insulted by Seti. Either Seti should go or like that, he has repeated, he gave me hint, removed Seti. But I replied, this is a Prabhupada speaking, I will not let that happen. And that doctor was Matre's man. He also gave a hint, give Matre two lakhs of rupees. He was a canvasser on behalf of Matre. He wanted two lakhs. We will not give you a single paisa, Mr. Seti concluded. We will fight you. Come on. So this is a, a, a real life experience of how violence, although there wasn't really violence, but the threat of violence uh, or the the um, the utility of violence or the necessity of violence was demonstrated in our personal uh, experience at Hare Krishna land in Juhu. And uh, <laughs> Mr. Seti really demonstrated that Kshatriya spirit, come on, we'll kill you. And Srila Prabhupada uh, very much appreciated it. So, uh, and I'm reminded of something that Srila Prabhupada told um, one of the GBCs. He, wasn't, he was not GBC in Bombay for very long, but he was GBC for a while. And Prabhupada said that when people finish dealing with us, they should tell their friends, these Hare Krishna people might look like fools, but actually they're very smart. Don't mess with them. <laughs> so Jai, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So we have a little time. Um, and so the, if devotees like, they can ask questions or make comments. Thank you, Maharaj, for your wonderful class. Nice stories. <clears throat> 
Had a question. I wanted to ask the lawyer who presided over the Juhu case, was he a devotee or a non-devotee? The chief uh, judge. Oh, the judge? Yes. Uh, he wasn't exactly a devotee, but he was very uh, appreciative of Srila Prabhupada at the devotees. He had actually been a guest of honor at one of our Pandal programs. And uh, before he became a lawyer, excuse me, before he became a judge, he was a lawyer. And uh, when he was a lawyer, he was Mr. Seti's lawyer. <laughs> so, um, yeah, yeah, he, he knew the devotees, he knew Mr. Seti, and uh, he, he, he knew that we were good people and that all the, um, you know, accusa accusations against us were, were really false and fact, uh, fictitious. Yeah. Thank you, Maharaj. My second question is, if a devotee, a devotee is trying to take away a property that belongs to the temple and dialogue is not working, what kind of violence can we use to safeguard the property for the temple like it happened in Juhu? You're saying if a devotee wants yes. to take away the property of a, of a temple, uh -huh. because he's because he's, he thinks he's powerful, has connections, and then devotees are not that connected. What kind of violence can we use to preserve the property <laughs> for the temple, based on this verse of today? Um, well. You know, I don't suggest, because he's, he, he's trying to take it away by legal means, not by physical force. So, you know, as they say, fight fire with fire. So I think we have to respond by, by legal means. Um, the other approach is, I don't know who, who the devotee is or if there's any spiritual authority that he respects, but the other approach would be to try to get some spiritual authority to reason with him, not to do this wrong thing. I think that would probably be the best. My father was a judge and he was famous for getting the parties to come to an amicable, means friendly uh, settlement uh, before th um, the matter actually going uh, to, to trial. So we should also um, try to um, somehow prevail upon that devotee to give up his, his wrong course of action. Thank you, Maharaj. Our next question is from Narayane. Narayane, please unmute yourself. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna Narayane. Thank you for your wonderful class. Um, I have a question. Um, let's say somebody kills somebody and then the judge order for the person to be killed. And if the person is being killed, and I want to ask because the person is, let's say the person is like 20 years old and the person has been killed. Would the person become a ghost because okay. he died untimely? He, he didn't okay. die. Oh. No. Um. There's no uh, ruling that if someone is killed at a young age that he'll become a ghost. Oh. No. Usually people become ghosts if they commit suicide. 
But I, I don't think that the young man who was killed uh, would uh, need to take birth as a ghost. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you so much, Maharaj. <laughs> Maharaj, our next question is from Sadev Prabhu. Okay. Sadev, please unmute. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much for blessing our forum again. My pleasure. Thank you. Uh, Maharaj, my question has to do with as, as devotees, as aspiring devotees, we have to listen to our leaders. We we learning spirituality from uh, senior devotees and uh, gurus. But if there is a situation which is completely like material, like if it's a legal issue and the leadership is strongly advising against keeping the case in the court. Uh, I, I'm a bit confused because this is a situation that is ongoing and I do not want to bring it openly to this forum. So I'm trying to make it like a general question. And so, uh, if I can try to rephrase it for a general understanding is how does uh, members of ISKCON go against the decision of the leadership when the devotees know clearly that what the leadership is saying is untrue? For instance, talking about ISKCON's property, if the ordinary devotees know that another person is trying to take away ISKCON's property and the administration, the authorities for that particular uh, temple or that particular yatra is not doing anything to reclaim or maintain ISKCON's property, but the devotees want to do something to reclaim or maintain the property. Would that be considered as like disrespectful or not obeying the orders of the authorities? What should the devotees do when it is clearly in black and white that Another person wants to claim the property of ISKCON, but the local leadership is nowhere in support of the devotees trying to reclaim the property that belongs to ISKCON. Uh, if possible, I can, I can tell you exactly what the situation is uh, of uh, this forum. Uh, but this is just a general question I have. Thank you very much, Mara. It might happen that the devotees see something that the authority doesn't see. And, you know, if the devotees are convinced that they need to take some action um, and just on that level, I would say they, they should take action. But there is a question that if they do take action, how will the authority respond? If, you know, if he didn't want to do it himself, but he doesn't mind if the devotees do it, then, then it's fine. Uh, if he gets upset, but even then, I mean, we shouldn't let Iskand's property be taken away. So I would, 
I would tend to say that we should fight to preserve the property or, you know, yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. But uh, if, the, if your authority gets upset, don't tell him that I said you, that you should. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Marat. Our next question is from Raja Bhakti Devi Das. Please unmute yourself, Raja Bhakti. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna Pariksha. Thank you so much for the amazing class. Oh, I'm glad you liked it. I heard that the books are coming to Columbus soon. I can't wait to read them. <laughs> yes, it's true. They, they have arrived in, in Los Angeles at the port and they're being, um, I think they're being moved to the uh, warehouse and very soon a, a large number will be sent to Lalita Devi and I'm sure that you, you can get a copy from her. And thank you for your interest. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yes, Maharaj, our next question is from Pavitra Bats. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Pranams. Uh, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. This is a question from Dalgorong Prabhuji. And uh, Dalgorong Prabhuji is saying that in this life, uh, he's deaf. Is this due to his past karma? And, um, but he's chanting now. Um, so will his karma uh, come to an end after this? He wants to know. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Yes, I mean, if someone is born deaf, uh, we can say it's due to his past karma. But if he becomes a devotee and is chanting, then, uh, you know, he's, He's um, becoming free from his past karma. And if he's completely successful in his Krishna consciousness, if we hope he will be, then he will go back home, back to Godhead. And no more karma. Only bhakti. But bhakti is, bhakti is beyond karma, anyavilasita sunyam, jnana karmadi anavritam. Yeah. So yeah, we wish him all success. Thank you, Maharaj. This next question is from Jayant M. Uh, Hare, Hare Krishna Maharaj, I offer my respectful audiences. Uh, Maharaj, I had a question that, uh, like I had two questions. Firstly, that sometimes, uh, let's say while we are walking or we are just, uh, our daily activity, sometimes we, uh, by Maya's effect, we are killing slower animals, namely like, and obviously we try to avoid, but unknowingly we, uh, we unfortunately kill them, like they come under our feet. So what about that? Do they kill us? Uh, in the next, uh, in the next, uh, in the next birth, if we uh, take a birth in this material world, and again, if um, they kill us, will we again kill them? And does this cycle go on eternally? Also, um, yeah, it, the world is such that you can't avoid killing. I mean, the Jain community try to avoid killing. You know, the, the traditional Jains, they, they, they wear a mask so they don't breathe in any living entities and they sweep the path in front of them so they don't step on anything. And, uh, and of course, they're, they're vegetarian, but not only vegetarian, but they don't eat things that involve killing, like some plants. Uh, of course, most fruits and vegetables, you don't kill the plant, but some like a potato. Um, if you eat a potato, you're, you're taking its life. So they don't eat potatoes. But ultimately you cannot avoid killing completely. And 
so we have to surrender to Krishna. That's really the only solution. Because Krishna says, Sarva dharman paritya ja mame kam sarnaram paritya. Aham tam sarva pape bio. I free you. I liberate you from all sin, sin reactions. So that's really the only solution. Uh, but as far as possible, we should chant. For example, Srila Prabhupada said that when we uh, w step on the grass, we're causing it pain. So as far as possible, we should avoid walking on the grass. But he said if we have to walk on the grass, then we should chant Hare Krishna, so at least the grass will get the benefit of hearing the holy name. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for that amazing explanation. Maharaj, my second question was, uh, you mentioned about chanting, but uh, sometimes, say, devotees, um, let's say they die in an accident, unfortunately, or at the time of that, they are unable to remember Krishna, though they were chanting the, uh, their whole life. So what about that? Do they uh, get liberated from the cycle of birth and death? Since uh, Krishna says that at the time of death, when you um, chant me, you will return to me. When you take my name, you will return to my abode. Well, generally, at the time of death, we think of whatever we're most attached to. We want to be attached to Krishna, to the Prabhupada, so that at the time of death, we think of, of Krishna. And, um, yeah, we may not always be in what we can think to be an ideal situation, surrounded by devotees chanting the holy name. But still, you know, we can we can think of Krishna. Once you know, Krishna Goswami said to Sri Prabhupada that I'm so busy serving you, what if uh, the time of death come and I'm just busy serving you? You know, what will happen to me? And uh, Srila Prabhupada replied that Lord Chaitanya will come and forcibly enter your mind. So, <coughs> there's hope of mercy, there's always hope of mercy. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj, for the amazing class and explanation. We need your mercy. Hare Krishna. Uh, Krishna Guru Maharaj, my next question is on the paper of Sri Prabhupada. Prabhupada mentioned about the murderer being murdered by, by being hung by the king. Yeah. So my question is, as preaching movements, the, the Ishkan or the Krishna movement, we make all kind of people devotees, the mafians, the ruffians, the criminals, we don't know who they are. We must have also made some murderers to become devotees because they may have they may have murdered somebody and they were not caught. They became devotees. <laughs> so their devotional service can it annul them from reaping the chemical reaction of killing somebody before they became devotees? Or they must be killed also, even in no. the next life. No, if they surrender to Krishna. He will free them from all sinful reactions. If they actually surrender and not just, you know, make a show, but if they actually surrender to Krishna, he will free them from sinful reactions. They don't have to be killed um, to be relieved of that of the sin of murder. So in the in the paper in the last paragraph, Prabhupada mentioned fighting. To be executed by Arjuna and the instruction of Krishna is with full knowledge. So there is no possibility of sinful reactions. So my question is, how do we know actually when to fight that we are not going to incur sinful reactions? Well, if you do whatever you do under Krishna's guidance, then there's no sinful reaction. If you act on your own account, then you may be subject to sinful reactions. But if you act 
only on Krishna's account, then um, there won't be any sinful reaction. If you act only on Krishna's account, it means if you engage exclusively in devotional service. Thank you, Maharaj. In Duleka David Dasi on the chat room is asking, say, Hare Krishna, if possible, she would like to get any advice. My brother ended his life yesterday. What can I do to help him now? Oh, I'm very sorry to hear that. Very sorry to hear that. Well, of course, you can pray for him. I'll also pray for him. And um, there's a ceremony called Shraddha. And so you, you, you have a program and you invite devotees and you have kirtan and you feed them. You, you, you offer food uh, and you offer that prasad to a picture of your brother. And that will um, uh, help your brother in whatever situation he's in. And yeah, have kirtan, read Bhagavad Gita, and um, and distribute prasad to devotees. But you offer, as I, as I mentioned, you offer prasad to the to your brother's picture, and that will uh, help him. Yeah. All right, my dear devotees, I thank you, Bala. Um, spend a lot of time with you. Yes, my life. Thank you so much. <laughs> we are grateful to have your darshan today. I have to do something else right now. Oh, uh, yeah. So I think I might have to take your leave now because of some um, commitment. Yes, my life. It was wonderful as usual. And um, yeah, I wish you all the best. And we we'll ask all devotees to kindly unmute yourselves and let's chant Hare Krishna to Maharaj for coming. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Krish
and having you as his sister, you or a devotee, um, he'll 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 get special mercy. I'm quite sure. Okay, thank you. So let us end with Vaishnav Pranam. I'll say the English and then we can say the Sanskrit. Let us offer our respectful obeisances to unto all the Vaishnav devotees of the Lord who are just like desire trees, who can fulfill the desires of everyone and are full of compassion for the fallen conditioned souls. Manchakalpa. Nantakoti Vaishnava in the key. Yeah. 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 Yeah.